This has been a very inspiring book. So if you're interested in bees, that is a good one. I ran away from home this morning. I'm about halfway to my destination in Missouri. I've been wanting to do this for over a year. When I met Dr. Leo and heard him for the first time in Hannibal, Missouri at the Homestead Life Conference in 2020, when most people didn't go, but we did, and we just learned an abundance of information. On a recent video, I talked about wanting to have my own bees, and I, I have no experience with bees. So, when I started to have an interest in them and knew that one day we were gonna have property, it was a no-brainer for me. I wanna have bees. I don't want it to be a high maintenance situation. And the first time I heard Dr. Leo and him speak on bees, it just seemed like my natural way of doing things is trying to not inject myself too much. Um, I don't want to be a god to the bees. Um, bees are a natural, beautiful thing. And I don't want to interrupt them. I want to have it be as natural as possible. And so if I'm going to get into this thing, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it the way that Dr. Leo does it. And at least try doing it his way before maybe trying other methods. We just finished the morning session with Dr. Leo and I'm actually waiting, he's about to drive by. We are going to his property to check out the bees, so I'm excited for that. Dr. Leo showed us his own hive that he saved from European fowl brood just this past May and June and discussed some of the common hive issues like wax moths, small hive beetles, viral mites. He also showed us some of his frames where those diseased bees are already rebuilding after just some natural treatments of just shaking the bees out and putting them in a new hive after cleaning the diseased hives and showed us how they're starting to thrive again. Okay, the very last frame again, uh, nothing except foundation. Frame 18, it's all covered in bees already. 18 is the number of the frame. No, I mean, how old is Oh, it? the hive is three years old. Three years it was old. a split from another colony. This is their third year. Okay. And again, in addition to the honey harvest, each year I'm harvesting frames of brood from them to make more colonies. So if I didn't take any brood from them in the spring, this box would uh, be completely full, but then they will probably would have swarmed too. Okay, last frame is our uh, being worked for honey. If you're standing behind me, I also love looking at the calm against the source of light, like the sun, with all of these golden colors. And this is how you can always tell whether the frame has a lot of bee bread. The bee bread is not transparent, so if you look at the, sun, at the frame uh, with the sun behind it and you see yeah. Yeah, big blobs of uh, material that's not yeah. transparent, uh, there is not much on this frame. I shift all of these frames into the depth of the hive and I put new frames by the entrance. Okay. This way when they build them out, uh, they will start storing honey in these frames by the entrance, but the queen will have uninterrupted laying in the further down. Okay. 
We got a tour of Dr. Leo's wood shop where he builds his hives and his frames, where he also shared with us that he has free plans online. So that's really cool. I was really impressed about him using an old computer cord to melt the foundation on the frames. With this white and uh, black, and uh, if you were to touch these wires yourself, it's safe, it's not going to shock you. Direct current, 12 volts or 15 volts is very, very low voltage. It's not dangerous even if you were to touch it. Uh, so you touch one end here and one end here, and you watch the, uh, the wax. As it's being here, the seeds are starting to look through like stitches. Cool. Yep. So if you wait too long, it will cut all the way through the wax and the wax will... So when it looks like stitches with some wire still on the other side and some on this side, you release and you are done. It's embedded completely and it's fused completely. This weekend of information has just come to a conclusion. I learned a lot more than I even anticipated. I have taken something like this because a lot of things have been confusing to me. There's so much that I have to learn. I'm walking out with some understanding and even more confusion with all of the options that were presented to me. I didn't realize that there was so much options and angles that you can go at with bees. Everything, just like with our garden, everything, it's going to have to be organic. I'm going to have to just get my hands dirty. I'm planning in the spring to catch my first swarm. And I just want to start naturally like that. Just catch a swarm, put it in a box, learn identifying what things look like, really get to know my bees before I start deciding that I'm going to do one thing or another thing or market honey. You know, there's just so many options. And I don't feel like it would be wise of me to make decisions like that when I don't even have my hands and experience with it. I feel like it's responsible to go learn how to do it naturally first. And in learning how to do it naturally, I also learned that there's a lot of things that are done that is thought to be natural that isn't. So that's why this was so valuable and so educational for me. I got my own swarm box from him and I was really tempted to buy a hive, but I'm going to go ahead and download those plans online and have Sid help me hopefully build that uh, once our shop project is done um, and so that'll be really cool to build out with him for the spring i'm hoping actually to build a few boxes i think i'm going to attach my swarm box on that tree that's going to be my first attempt in the spring i think that's the tree that i have picked out for my first time one of the biggest loudest messages for me during this class that Dr. Leo said himself is nature is cruel and it is our nature to want to try to save everything um, save the bees you know that's a big thing and there's different methods you know between natural beekeepers and then you know treatment of bees and an effort to save them it was profound for me to hear this message about if we interact and coddle bees with these things, then we're actually weakening their strain. If we interact with them and treat them, we're creating super bugs that are just stronger at killing them. That's not to say that there's not natural ways to do it, but the way that the information's been presented to me, it just there's just a voice in me that I just know that that's how I need to try it. Grow.